Our long national nightmare is finally over. Spring football has returned. You want to bet on it. You want to play DFS. You want to dominate the USFL conversation at the water cooler. Well, you're in the right place. I'm Peter Overzet, and here's everything you need to know about the USFL. It was a little over two years ago that some of us became XFL thought leaders. It was the perfect oasis amid a long, dry NFL offseason. We fell in love with P.J. Walker and the Houston Roughnecks high-flying offense. We fell in love with Donald Parham going beast mode. And most of all, we fell in love with XFL DFS. Then COVID rugged us. It rugged us real good, and we were left wandering the proverbial desert thirsty for football action in the spring. But now it's time to love again, to turn into thought leaders for a brand new spring football league. Enter the USFL. And this isn't your father's USFL. Richard Trump scores the game's only touchdown. No, this is a new look, freshly rebooted spring football league. Brian Woods and Fox Sports have put up 200 million to fund the first three seasons of the league. We have eight different teams. We're gonna have 40 televised games and all of them will be taking place in Birmingham, Alabama. That's right, we have a bubble, NBA COVID style. Not only will all of the games be televised, but DraftKings recently confirmed that A, we are gonna have USFL betting, and B, most importantly, we are going to have USFL DFS. We even have title odds for all eight teams after the draft happened a couple of weeks ago. More on that in the best bets in a second. Like with any new DFS sport, those sick enough, those degenerate enough, those with too much time on their hands can pour through the depth charts, pour through the rules, and find an edge early on in their DFS play. Starting April 16th, we'll have eight straight weekends of USFL football culminating on June 25th and July 3rd with the playoffs and the championship game respectively. Did you just check your calendar? Yeah, it's time to start mentally preparing yourself for leaving the Easter table to check your USFL lineups. Hey, real quick, this is a brand new channel for all of my non-live stream content. I'd love it if you would subscribe. We're gonna be doing USFL videos, DFS, NFTs, best ball, you name it, it's going to be here. All of your favorite things that we do to preoccupy ourselves with our slow, inevitable march toward death. Sorry, this was just supposed to be a lighthearted, please subscribe to the channel promo. So you're probably wondering, hey Pete, what familiar names do we have in the USFL? Which guys will I be rostering on my lineups? Um, The league isn't necessarily star-studded. However, when life gives you footballs in the spring, I think is how the saying goes, you make lemonade, okay? So here's a quick rundown of all the teams, their coaches, their most notable players, and a little DFS nugget to help you out for each squad. First up, we have the Michigan Panthers, who will be coached by none other than Jeff Fisher. Yes, it's time to update your 8-8 eight eight jokes with 4-4 four and four jokes. The Panthers will be led by quarterback Shea Patterson, who was taken first overall by the Panthers. Patterson played his college ball at Old Miss and at Michigan and also had a brief stint with the Chiefs. Well, now he's locked into a quarterback battle with another name you might remember, Paxton Lynch. Life comes at you fast. All right, here is your DFS alpha leak for the Panthers. Shea Patterson and his college-wide receiver, Quincy Adeboyajo. God, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Anyways, they have been fishing together and even recently caught a shark. Adjust the ranks. We know there's a strong correlation between quarterback and wide receiver, but the R squared is through the roof for quarterback and wide receivers who fish together. All right, here's a bonus alpha leak for you with the Panthers. The edge rusher they drafted, Chase Damore, well, he was a star on season two of the Netflix show, Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, I feel like I haven't felt that. <laughs> oh my God, the cockroach is landing on my forehead. A show I'm embarrassed to say I've seen in its entirety. Next up, we have the Philadelphia Stars coached by Bart Andrus, a man who, if I didn't know any better, I would assume owned a bunch of car dealerships or perhaps strip clubs. Their QB is Brian Scott, who apparently was the quarterback for the United States under 19 men's national football league, something I didn't even know existed until I became a USFL thought leader 30 minutes ago. I will say Scott once beat out former NFL quarterback Zach Mettenberg for a starting spot in the spring league, and I don't know, that has to count for something. 
All right, here is your alpha leak for the stars. They have two twin towers wide receivers. They have Jordan Sewell, who's a 6'6 wide receiver who runs a 4'5 40. And then there's Brennan Eagles, who's 6'3 220 and runs a 4'5 540. Then there's the New Jersey Generals, who will be coached by Mike Riley. He actually coached the Chargers for three years, and they went 14 and 34 in that span with Ryan Leaf at quarterback. He won't have much better to work with in the USFL, but the team can hang their hat on their defense. The team drafted cornerback Devontae Busby, another name I'm just praying I got right, but he actually won a ring as a Philadelphia Eagles practice squad player. He's also the AAF's all-time leader in pass breakups and interceptions. All right, here is your DFS alpha leak for the generals. Wide receiver Cavante Turpin, He's a diminutive speedster, 5'7", 158, runs a 40 in the four threes, and was the first wide receiver taken by the Generals in the draft. He can also return punts, and for you shower narrative enthusiasts, he actually played in the spring league with his quarterback in the USFL, Ben Holmes. Next, we have the Pittsburgh Maulers, who will be coached by Kirby Wilson, who you might remember... Never mind, you certainly don't remember. But he was the running backs coach on two Super Bowl teams. It was Gruden's Bucks and Tomlin's Steelers. This guy knows how to win. The Maulers will start Kyle Laletta. Yes, the 2018 fourth round pick by the New York Giants. And sure, he went 0-4 for the Giants, but the USFL is all about new beginnings. Trust the process. And here is your DFS alpha leak for the Maulers. And thank you to fellow USFL thought leader Cody Main for unearthing this nugget from a Kirby Wilson interview where he makes it pretty clear how he wants to operate his offense. Offensively, we're gonna, we're, it's real simple. You got to control the line of scrimmage and you got to secure, secure the football offensively. Because if you control the line of scrimmage, guess what? You control the clock. And if you control the clock, you control the game. It's not hard to read between the lines there and realize the Maulers are going to establish it. Then there are the Tampa Bay Bandits, head coach by familiar name Todd Haley, who you might remember coached the Chiefs from 2009 to 2011, and more recently was the head coach at Riverside High School in Sarasota. Hey, don't laugh. Have you seen Siesta Key? It's gorgeous down there. The Bandits also have arguably the best quarterback in the league, Jordan Tiamo, who is a household name well, a household name in XFL thought leaders' households. But he showed a baseline level of competency running the offense. And frankly, in the USFL, that's all we can ask for. All right, here's your DFS alpha leak. The team also has wide receiver Eli Rogers, who has two very important connections to his quarterback and his coach. He, of course, played in the XFL, as did Jordan Tiamo. And on top of that, more importantly, he actually thrived as a rookie in Todd Haley's steel... Next, we have the team with the undisputed best team name in the league. It is, of course, the Houston Gamblers. They will be coached by Kevin Sumlin. He's the former SEC Coach of the Year, also has four bowl wins under his belt. Their most notable player is probably wide receiver Isaiah Zuber, who actually suited up for the Patriots multiple times in 2020. And look, if Bill Belichick has eyes for you, that's enough for me. Zuber and the Gamblers is, dare I say it, a great fit. All right, here's your DFS alpha leak for the Gamblers. They have former Florida Gator running back, Mark Thompson. The dude is 232 pounds, 6'2", and runs a 4'5'40", which, as Sal Vetri points out, makes him essentially a bigger and faster Frank Gore. Yeah, sign me up for that. Next up, there's the Birmingham Stallions. Yes, the true home-home team in this league. They will be coached by Skip Holtz, a longtime SEC coach who was most recently let go by Louisiana Tech. Their most notable player is probably pass rusher Aaron Adeo, who had a two-year stint with the Ravens. Look, if you're just now realizing that the bar to clear for being a notable player in the USFL is pretty low, I'm sorry. What if I told you both him and his brother were drafted? Okay, it's a stretch. I don't know what to tell you. All right, here's your DFS alpha leak for the Stallions. They took the first overall wide receiver drafted in the entire USFL, and that was, of course, Victor Bolden. In his 35 games for Oregon State, he had 164 receptions, 1,801 receiving yards, seven receiving touchdowns, along with 83 rushing attempts, 632 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns. We love to see that versatility, and he should soak up lots of targets out of the slot as well. 
Our final team is the New Orleans Breakers, who, for my money, have the best uniforms in the league and are led by the extremely chiseled, Red Bull guzzling, visor-wearing Larry Fedora. You know what I would say? More like Larry Visor, guys, because that's all this guy wears. Fedora will have quarterback Kyle Slaughter behind center. Slaughter was undrafted out of UNC, bounced around on a few NFL squads, but if you actually check the numbers, was fairly impressive for the Vikings in the preseason back in 2017. So you're saying there's a chance. And here's your DFS alpha leak for the Breakers. They have arguably the most talented wide receiver core in the entire league. Taewon Taylor and Chad Williams were both third round picks in the 2017 NFL draft. And the Breakers actually took Sean Poindexter ahead of both of them. And then there's Jonathan Adams, who's a big bodied, productive wide receiver out of Arkansas State. Slaughter double stacks, anyone? The 2022 version of the USFL will look much different than the 1980s version, which lasted approximately three seasons until an idiot ran it into the ground while filing an antitrust lawsuit against the NFL while simultaneously trying to force a merge. Mike Pereira, who's a familiar face to many of you, will be the head of officiating for the USFL, and there aren't too many crazy or zany rules here. They are stealing the XFL's overtime rules. Cheers, which is where the teams alternate plays from the two yard line and the team with the most points after three plays wins. Teams will also have three different options for extra point, a one point, a two pointer, or a three pointer. The three pointer will take place from the 10 yard line. And then for teams wanting to retain possession, in addition to an onside kick, they'll also have the opportunity to run a fourth and 12 play from their own 33 yard line. If they complete it, they get to keep the ball. Okay, so it's time for the most important question of all. Who do we bet on? Who do we fire up in DFS? Early title odds have the Michigan Panthers as the presumptive favorite at plus 400, presumably because they had the first overall pick in the draft, but I'm not sure if that's the best bet for us here. I like the Tampa Bay Bandits at plus 550. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Jordan Tiamo, who we've already seen prove it at the XFL level. The cherry on top, the Bandits have a league high 29 players who have spent time on NFL rosters per Anthony Reinhardt, making them one of the most veteran, well-established teams in the league. As for DFS, we're still waiting to hear from DraftKings and potentially other sites on what type of contest they're going to offer. My guess is it's safe to assume we're going to be getting lots of two-game slates, lots of showdown slates, but maybe if we're lucky, we can cross our fingers and hope for a full weekend classic slate, you know, comprising all four or five of the games taking place. One thing's for certain, if you want to be successful at USFL DFS, if we learned anything from XFL DFS, it's understanding these depth charts and who's going to get opportunity that's going to be be most important at the start. Once we have baselines for how these teams to operate, that's when the Sims come into play. And thankfully, our friends over at Run the Sims have us covered on this. They run 10,000 simulations on every showdown slate. They have an optimizer for the main slate. They even have player prop tools that can show you the best bets. And this is going to help us look at how often these USFL players are appearing in optimal lineups across these simulations. Then we can see what the field's doing with ownership projections and then make the best possible decisions in lineups using that data all together. I highly recommend Run the Sims. I use the site all season for my NFL showdown play, and now we get to run it back again with USFL. With promo code PETE, you can get 10% off their early bird package, which is available right now for the very nice price of $69. And if you use promo code PETE, you'll also get access to a private USFL Discord channel within the Deposit Kingdom Discord. That link is down below. If you get signed up and use promo code PETE, shoot me a message and we'll get you added to that Discord. And if you still have any hesitancy about diving in, about falling in love with the USFL, about becoming a thought leader like myself, well, what if I told you they are following in F1's footsteps and producing a 13-episode documentary series on the USFL. You know what's going to happen. You're going to fall in love with these players. I'm Peter Overzet. Good luck in the USFL streets. We'll be back with more content here on this brand new channel soon. Peace.